Servus, this is Matthias Eichler with some breaking news and commentary right here on Single Track. Early this morning, the trail running community woke up to the surprising, shocking, exciting news that the popular website Fastest Known Time sold to Outside Interactive. I've got links in the show notes to all the relevant articles which speaks to some of the details of the acquisition. Now I'm here with Alex Bond, regional editor for the Pacific Northwest, and Jason Hardrath and Ashley Winchester, both prolific FKT holders and chasers. This is a very new development for our community, and here are some first thoughts and impressions. Okay, so here we are. Um, in Well, fastest no time sold to outside overnight. I've got Alex Bond um, on the line, who is a regional editor for Fastest Known Time here for the Pacific Northwest region, as well as Ashley Winchester and Jason Hathras, who are both FKTers. And um, so uh, thanks for jumping um, on and making this possible. Yeah, we're, I think we're all excited to be here. Super excited to be here. So why don't we start? Why don't we start quickly with Alex, since since you have um, the most skin in the game, I guess. <laughs> I suppose. Why don't you quickly give us a very uh, quick snapshot of how you heard about um, the sale and the development? So my understanding, and I want to make clear that you know I've had some conversations with some of the folks at outside, um, but you know I don't have throughout all of this. I'm just going off of what I've been told so far and, and what I've picked up. And so, um, you know, I don't want to purport to necessarily have the entire story about this, but my understanding is that um, several months ago or sort of in the late fall at some point, you know, it sounds like the folks at the website were feeling like they were ready to move on from the management of it and that there was a need for a more professional uh, better funded structure for it. Um, you know, we'd been doing things to fund the website, like asking for donations as people submitted routes and that, um, you know, there were just sort of a feeling that they, that it was time to move on. And I think, um, you know, there were some people who were involved with it who were a little bit burned out on it and some people who are still excited to continue doing it. But long and the short of it is um, the FKT website folks got in touch with outside and uh, I don't know exactly how sort of the negotiations of the deal went down, but um, yeah, it was announced today. Um, you know, from my conversations that I've had with the people at outside, there's not going to be, you know, it doesn't, I don't believe that there's going to be a super immediate change. You know, you can go to the website right now and uh, I'm looking at it and you can't see outside anywhere on it except on, you know, the podcast link and article where it was announced. And, um, you know, you go to the list of who's on the team and it's uh, it's still the same folks. So, you know, I think it's going to be a bit of a gradual process as we sort of do the handover. I don't think um, anybody's going to if anybody submits an FKT this afternoon, you know, I don't think that they're going to have any different of an experience than if they had done it yesterday. Um, you know, so I think some of the question is going to be, you know, as things ramp up into the summer, you know, what are some of the changes that they are going to be um, making in a little bit more sort of of the more medium and long term? You know, I think um, immediately I, I, it doesn't look like there's going to be anything huge happening right away. Yeah, I think it's it speaks to our sport growing up a little bit. I think that there is a lot of movement. We've seen the partnership with UTMB and Ironman. Um, we see bigger sponsors coming into the sport. Um, so on one side, trail running feels to be growing up. And, you know, what What the guys as Fastest Known Time did, they created something out of completely nothing, right? The word Fastest Known Time didn't really exist and um, they created sort of these challenges to the point that, you know, it's made it into the New York Times. So it has become a sort of a household name and activity for what uh, one can do while while self-propelling themselves out in, in nature, to say it, on um, the most broadest of terms. And then on the other side, we've seen outside 
who seems to be incredibly well funded because their acquisition spree over the last couple of years has been quite tremendous. So they're building something really big. So lots is changing in the landscape. Yes. If I may very quickly, you know, this isn't the first time that the fastest known time sort of website structure has changed. You know, folks who have been checking this out for a long time might remember the old pro boards posts. It was this old school internet forum where people would start a thread on for a particular route and sort of say, you know, it was very, very, it was very 1990s kind of technology kind of thing. And, you know, I think we've sort of seen, you know, this is just another step in some of the evolution of, um, you know, of how the website has been structured and, and how, you know, how, how this is a, a web tool for people to interact with this. But I, you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, the website as it exists today has, you know, been how it has been forever. This is always changing and has always been changing. And so I, I think that that's some, some context worth bringing to it as well. Absolutely. Jason, have you been involved with Fastest Known Time? Do you, uh, do you remember the old pro board? Do you remember that forum? Or have you been only part of it since the new website? I really, I, I, I became minorly aware of uh, the FKT uh, movement while it was still on pro boards. But where I really started interacting with it, they'd already built the fastest known time website. Yeah, I, I remember I, I remember the old pro board to researching iconic routes, just trying to find fun fun places to sort of run, not even thinking about it from an FKP FKT point of view. And then me, the designer in me said, I always thought that um, they needed a redesign and then the redesign happened. I'm like, well, that's exactly what I would have done. So great job. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is obviously a big thing. How do we feel about this, Ashley? Uh, um, cautiously optimistic, but also kind of skeptical. I mean, it's, FKT has been growing a lot over the last couple of years. And I think that something like this was sort of a long time coming. I mean, it's hard for, you know, just a group of a small group of people to manage something that's, that's growing this fast. Um, but it, it, there are a lot of concerns that come along with it, you know, like outside is a big organization and, you know, what is going to happen to our little grassroots community um, I mean, I think there's a lot of potential um, with outside bringing money into the sport and maybe hopefully making it more accessible and, um, you know, bringing more people into it and, you know, maybe taking away some some barriers to entry. But it it is really concerning. And I, I've talked to several athletes who are, you know, FG tiers and they range from people who are, you know, just weekend warriors all the way to pro athletes and, and everybody's expressing concern over this about what's going to happen and, and how how are they going to treat our community? Yeah, I mean, if the, the site has seen the, the sort of the activity has seen such a f in, insane growth. Um, which in large part is probably just due to Jason doing an FKT um, <laughs> every single week. What's your, the percentage of growth that it's just due to you? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it, it, it sort of, it speaks to sort of a complete new segment of the sport that didn't really exist before, right? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think probably where some of that concern comes from is continuing to vet out and walk the line of accessibility, accessibility and um, this need as the community grows for validity, right? And that's going to be the tough line to walk because if you, if you toe the line too much on super high levels of validity, then you know, the, the dirt bag athlete. I mean, I started doing FKTs with maxed out credit cards, living out of a $600 smoking Astro van. Like I could only afford to donate a, a few dollars here and there to the, to the website. And so if there was even a slightly higher barrier to entry, I, I would have just tracked my times elsewhere. Um, so it's like you're, you're towing this line where you're, you have this possibility of significant contributors, um, 
not not having not having access to the same degree but also it's like you need to have that element of validity if suddenly there's a huge a much larger uh user base um and money is involved um and how do you how do you walk that line carefully where you don't drive people away but also um still still have that higher standard yeah it is it is an interesting challenge because on one side it's a tool a tool just like strava segments or route builder is just a tool but and 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 that would be something that you could in my perspective sort of easily see well you've got a cost to it you need to fund it somehow it you know needs to be in someone's hand who can manage it but there is so much more because it is a community that is built around that alex can you talk a little bit about from a from a from a time if somebody submits a new route how long does it take for you to verify this route like what's the sort of you know can you speak to 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 what to the um to the cost if you will right i mean without putting dollar figures behind it yeah i mean i don't know how much i don't know off the top of my head what you know the costs to host the website and so forth are um you know but you know how much does adding a new route add in terms of bandwidth and and so forth i i, I don't necessarily know that but you know in terms of the time it takes you know it really um it depends kind of on the route. You know, I think there are some routes that are very clearly, this is awesome and absolutely the kind of thing we want up on the website and that, you know, it takes not very long at all to sort of, you know, as long as it takes for me to check my email and to do a few minutes of, you know, paperwork on the website to get it up. Then there are some where, um, you know, are pretty clearly, this is not ex exactly what we're looking for. It's, you know, the hill in somebody's backyard and, and that really more belongs to be a, a, as a Strava segment. And um, those, you know, are often pretty quick to identify as, as that sort of a thing. And then it's just sort of a matter of writing up an email to someone with the bad news. The more complicated ones are the ones that are sort of the edge cases where, um, you know, maybe I don't know this area and is this mountain actually an interesting and important one or not? Is this trail an interesting and important one or not? Um, you know, and then it's a matter of, you know, if I have local connections to folks in that area, I could email somebody and say, hey, I got this submission. What do you think of it? You know, do you think this is the sort of thing we want up on the website? Um, or, you know, what I had done in, you know, in the past often would talk to, you know, Peter about it and sort of say, hey, Peter, check out this route. Here's why I think it's good. Here's why I think it's bad. What's your take on it? Um, you know, I think one of the things that the outside folks have talked about is sort of having a all of us regional editors at times with these sort of situations act as, as a bit of a jury and that, you know, maybe we would, you know, all email each other and sort of say, hey, you know, all 10 of us, let's get together and decide whether we think this is a good route or, or not. But those are the ones where it's a little bit more complicated. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why if somebody is creating a new route, I always encourage folks to, you know, contact us at the website ahead of time, you know, before they go out and run their route, you know, maybe uh, send us an email and say, hey, I'm thinking about this route, you know, would, do you think that this is a good route? And then we can say, you know, yeah, wow, that looks awesome. You, you know, go for it rather than, um, you know, or wow, that's 95% the same as some other route that we already have up on the website. Like, maybe you should just run that other person's route rather than try to create your own that is just barely at all different. Um, you know, those sort of situations or say, you know, well, you know, actually the guidelines say you have to start and end at a trailhead. So you have to change your route to, to match that, um, that sort of a thing. Um, you know, but then now we're, we're going to be in a new situation where I think we're going to see some changes to the guidelines for routes. The outside folks have talked about wanting to add more sports, you know, have more cycling and skiing and, you know, maybe kayaking a river and stuff like that. And and I think it's going to be a little bit more climbing. And I think that's exciting because there's a lot of cool stuff going on in those sports that I'd love to be able to see reflected somewhere. You know, I look at the world of cycling and I, there's not really a repository for fastest known times on the bike other than Strava KOMs. Um, 
So I think that's actually kind of a cool opportunity, but it makes it a little bit more complex. And, and uh, you know, my understanding is that they're going to go out and solicit some community feedback. They're going to talk to folks about, you know, what are the kind of things that when we're talking about a skiing route, that when we're talking about a cycling route, um, you know, what makes sense, what doesn't, what should some of these guidelines look like? And, and I think we're going to see some change in that. Um, you know, again, this is day one that this was announced, and I've had some conversations with the folks about this, and I think they've got this vision to move in that direction, but I don't have any details to speak sort of more beyond that at this point. Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in there and, and agree. And I mean, I've seen a little more openness already to some more of these mixed uh, discipline routes um, on the FKT website. And I, I totally agree that as the ability to manage them grows, it is something that if you're going to name your website fastest known time, you kind of need to be the house of any sort of a credible effort that involves keeping track of time on a route. And so, yeah, for a long time, I've had, I've fielded complaints just as a FKT enthusiast um, from people in the rock climbing world and people in the cycling world where they're like, hey, wait a minute, why can't this live there? It's a classic route in our discipline. It's like, oh, well, it falls a little bit outside of the parameters of what the, the founders listed as their guidelines and rules. And so it can't, it can't live here. Um, but I would, I personally, for a long time, uh, have loved the idea of seeing, you know, everything from the nose, uh, speed record to, um, you know, mountain biking loops on, on various roads and trails, um, that are kind of considered classics. Um, yeah, this idea of including things like kayaking or potentially even some hike and fly type stuff, that's, it's inspiring because what's going to happen is as soon as you change the the context of the rules, you get a whole new amalgam of creative endeavors put together by people who think outside the box. And so that that's inspiring to me to, to think like, oh, man, the things that will come out of this that people will put together um, could be really, really inspiring and cool. Yeah, and I would say that, you know, these other disciplines, these other sports, these are this is something that a lot of people in the FKT community have been wanting to see end up on the website for a long time and just, you know, the, the small group of people who have been running the website just, you know, couldn't, it's just hard to manage all of that and build a website surrounding all of those different sports. So it's a great opportunity to see, you know, all of these other sports come in um, and, and see some cool stuff go down. Yeah, I think that's where the big exciting opportunity lies that if we, have this platform in the hands of people that are well funded and they have the ability to sort of expand the scope of this um and that that speaks to the technology side to the sort of the tool of it um are we cautious because there's a potential that the community could suffer i mean i think i've seen a lot of folks on social media posting about the importance of the community and the future of this. And I, I think that that couldn't be more true. Um, you know, if people want to make this great and, you know, it was people who participating in this and telling these stories and posting these times and going for these runs. I mean, that was what made, that's what's made this good so far. And that's what's going to continue to make it good. And if people want to engage with, continue to want to engage with this, and I think it, it's going to be continue to be, awesome. And I think if folks decide, you know what, this isn't for me anymore, like I think it could wither on the vine. It's totally possible. And I hope that, and I hope that the outside people recognize that. And I think they do, um, that, you know, they need to make sure that they are, that they have a community here who they need to listen to and they need to work with and they need to support. Um, so, you know, that, that's, I think I've expressed that. Um, I think people are right to say that. Um, you know, personally, I'm going to give, I'm giving outside the benefit of the doubt and give them a shot. Um, you know, and I hope other folks will as well, but, uh, yeah, I, I think it couldn't be more true that, that how the community responds to this is, is going to be so important. Yeah. It's a, it's a big ask of outside, not because of anything that outside is or is doing but just because we've seen i come from a technology side and we've seen enough 
technology acquisitions that were made because of the technology and it was the community that suffered under it. And as you're saying, we need to give outside the benefit of the doubt because they are not responsible for what Google or Yahoo have done with some of the tools that they've acquired. But I think because we've experienced that, that's what makes us nervous, right? Yeah, uh, I think, you know, one of the things on my mind, and I've heard this echoed by a few people I've talked to, is this idea that, you know, someone with a business mindset making even a, a slightly wrong decision on a, on a path or a barrier to entry uh, could leave a whole a large since since one of the one of the aspects that draws people to FKTs is like oh yeah I don't have the money to you know drop two hundred to a thousand dollars on a race entry fee but hey I can go do this epic similar length similar difficulty or more difficult FKT instead like that is an important piece of the culture um, and so if suddenly now the barrier to entry is equal then you're going to cut out, you know, by default, you're going to cut out that portion of the, the community, which I think some of those people are some of the people doing the most interesting things. Um, yeah. So I, I think I, that makes it tough. That makes it tough from a business standpoint. Yeah, I can see that. I could see that perhaps redoing a route would be free, perhaps, but then putting out a new route would cost something or something just because it's more work to vet the route. And that could potentially stifle creativity because people are not able, or it wouldn't be the clearinghouse anymore, right? Because anybody can put a route. You don't need that website to dream up a route in, in the mountains. Anybody can do that. But it be, has sort of, it has become this 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 default place. This is where you sort of put this, and it still needs to be accessible in order to drive creativity in the community yeah and i hope i hope they recognize that and 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 i think they will um but yeah i mean if you don't have if you don't have people submitting routes and submitting times then you know what's the point in having the website and so yeah yeah and i think especially in trail running where everybody on one side does races, which is different to rock climbing. They're not real competition outside of like, you know, com sport competitive climbing. But in general, it, everything is driven by either the existing routes or um, this desire to put something new together. And bringing that over to running sort of was, was that, that spark of genius that the FKT team came up with. And... I think that because it's so new, there's so much untapped potential there. And probably that's why Outside bought it, because they recognize that, right? Especially if you look at other sports on top of that, right? That there is sort of a whole new world that, that lays to be explored. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's what, that's what drew me into it. I was already out doing these types of connections and routes and then like a few of the routes that I submitted were things I'd already done that it's like, Oh, well, this is the obvious home for this type of an effort. And, you know, that's one of the things that locked me into this journey of, of chasing over a hundred FKTs is the idea that it's already what I was in love with. Um, and I think it's important to keep that spirit to flip to, to a more positive perspective. I mean, one of the, one of the like, ongoing complaints again you know people people like to open up to me about whatever they're feeling or thinking about the uh fkt website or whatever is a lack was a lack of any sort of a user voice you know the, there was no like rating system no uh way to like tick list a route that maybe you didn't beat the other than leaving a comment that maybe you didn't beat the fkt on um but you completed it uh no way to like sort of rack up a to-do list such as on um, Mountain Project. Um, I think integrating some things that give the users, the, the community, more of a voice and uh, a way to, to sort of quantify what routes are popular and what routes are um, inspiring more people to get out. I think that could be 
a really useful thing that we've been we've been hamstrung by because we had one coder who was doing it part time in his free time, and it's like you can only get so much done coding a website when you know you've got a team of part time one, and if you know outside is able to put a team of people on this, you could build a fabulous website um, that has a ton of user uh, features that were previously not possible. So. When I think, I think that's one of their goals that they stated in their, um, the article on outside.com is that they're planning on improving the user interface and adding a lot of, um, really cool features to the website. And it doesn't say anything about monetizing it. I think I don't know who I talked to, but somebody said that they're planning on even taking down the, um, the donation option, which I'm not sure maybe Alex can speak to that. They actually took that down a while ago. Oh, did they? <laughs> I yeah, I, that, that was, that was this, that was kind of when it was getting set up was, was when they, I, I, cause, um, I don't know if folks noticed that or not, but yeah, they took that down uh, last fall and that was sort of, it was, I think when they were kind of signing the paperwork, they were like, well, we, if we're signing this over, we don't want to be taking people's donations anymore. So that was sort of the, the where there's smoke, there's fire kind of thing, but sorry, continue. No, that, that just, it makes me kind of optimistic that, you know, even though this is a, a big company that's coming in, maybe they're not planning on monetizing FKTs themselves, but somehow monetizing the website with ads and stuff like that. And I know that they're going to bring in um, Gaia Maps, which is owned by outside and uh, maybe they'll use it as a platform for that. I mean, there's so much obvious overlap um, that outside already um, owns that it definitely is very much uh, fitting into their existing portfolio. It doesn't come out of left field. Um, and that part is super exciting to see, right? I mean, you could ostensibly see um, as a outside member, you have a profile and as a with that profile, you can sort of have this checklist of this is everything that I've done, I'm planning on doing. and But then it becomes this social media behemoth. And that's what worries me because what I currently like about the site that it is so niche and focused, right? If it gets too big, then it just becomes too costly from a technology piece to, to support. Yeah, I think FKTs were kind of headed towards the mainstream anyway. Mm. Um, so I'm not sure that that's something that we could ever avoid. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, well, there, yeah there are many people have said they're an essential part of American running since we're not able to just house races where, wherever we want on you know, wilderness land. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that they FKTs were on their way, especially after the catalyst of, you know, 2020, everything, all races getting shut down due to the pandemic. Um, we were going to end up going a direction where how, how do these FKT efforts fit into this bigger scheme of representing American running on an international scale? Um, and, you know, internationally as well. Um, Oh, yeah, it's 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 true. I mean, that's what sort of definitely tipped the scale and and made it and made it explode. Alex, do you have any idea? That's is just my my personal thing. How many people submit something? Is it, what's the percentage of people who submit new routes and people who are chasing, um, uh, um, chasing existing routes? That's uh, I don't. I think I know the answer to that question in terms of, um, you know, but off the top of my head, what an exact number is, but we definitely get a lot more times than we get new routes um, by a pretty large factor. And so I think most people are, most people are doing the pre-existing routes that have already been submitted. There are a lot more of those than there are new routers. Cool. Um, well, awesome. Is there is there any other angle that we need to that we need to think about that we need to chat um, about? Um, I mean, the only other thing that I can think of at this point is you know with FKTs kind of moving towards a, a larger 
audience is, you know, making sure that we care for our wilderness areas and follow rules and regulations. And, and there are a lot of FKTs out there that, you know, cross into tribal lands um, and, you know, cross country and, and stuff like that. So there's a concern on my end about, you know, caring for these spaces, but also, you know, that these FKTs, because of those things, might get removed from the website. And my, the other thing I'll mention is, is you know, this is, is from a safety perspective. I'm not aware of anybody dying or having a very serious injury on an FKT attempt. It's possibly happened and I didn't hear about it, but I haven't heard about it. And, you know, with more and more routes that include things like fifth class climbing and very remote and dangerous, I mean, at some point, you know, the odds are such that there's going to be a tragedy and that's going to be very sad when it happens. Um, I hope that people continue to be safe and to make good decisions and so on and so forth. So that's kind of my hope is every year I think about, you know, we think about sort of resolutions for the next year in the FKT world. And that's always my one is I hope that we have another good year in terms of everybody being smart and staying alive. No, absolutely. I can echo that. Um, when, um, Tabitha and Mary did my Cushman six route and had to camp overnight on copper. I was very nervous about that. <laughs> I was like, Oh my gosh, what did I create? <laughs> um, well, then, then we probably should say a huge, um, thank you and shout out to Peter Backwin, Buzz Burrell and Jeff Shula for, um, creating this incredible tool that we all, um, love so much and use and a, 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 a a promising and forward reaching thank you to outside for taking this into a new uh, into a new area perhaps i should leave you all with this what are your fkts on the horizon for um 2022 and uh, jason you only get to say a couple <laughs> um i'll yeah i'll go ahead and drop a big one that's on my mind um Actually, both Sean O'Rourke, who's kind of a legend in the uh, in the FKT world and the just the mountain world as well. He, he is the uh, man. That is such a badass. He and I both have had the same vision for a, for a project in California um, of using the Normans 13, uh, the 13 14ers of the Sierra Range, as a, a path to also tag um to get a two for one that record and then also the california 14ers by bike record in a single push and yeah we just happened into a conversation where we both opened up about thinking the exact same thing and i was like well shoot i guess we should do that together um so that's kind of the the cool project on on my horizon that's very motivating and inspiring to get to go out and do an epic push like that with a legend like him um yeah it's, it's unreal how fast that man can move through the mountains amazing um, and i love the biking in between i think that opens up so many possibilities that we haven't really, really even thought about like we said it's going to be if 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 this is managed well it's going to be really really amazing to see the growth and creativity in in the upcoming years it's going to be unreal the stuff we see people put together and with the improvements in uh ability to capture video and to animate gpx files in a 3d you know google earth type space um we're going to see really cool depictions of the adventures people get inspired to go do by mixing these sports and pushing the limits fantastic ashley how about you Oh, I have a lot of things on the list, um, but as far as things set in stone, I don't, I don't really have anything set in stone at the moment because it all uh, comes down to permitting and um, kind of how I recover from my most recent injury COVID thing that happened up on uh, Aconcagua in January. Um, but yeah, I do. I have some, some big things on the horizon. I've uh, started getting on a bike and I'm hoping to do some more uh, mixed sport type FKTs, um, maybe looking at picnics and duathlons and stuff like that. Um, 
but yeah, I don't, I don't have anything super set in stone right now. So we'll see what the, what happens with uh, some permits coming up. Cool. Cool. Alex, how about you? Are you just uh, putting other people's FKT up or are you eyeing something yourself? Well, I'd really like to do Glacier Peak in a day this summer, but I will be probably like maybe like three times slower than the FKT or something like that. I'd like to do it in, um, you know, without sleeping. That's fast enough for me. Nice. You see, the, you see, the way I always do is, is I just come up with new routes that nobody has done before. So I can at least for a short period of time claim claim the FKT, right? <laughs> 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 because I certainly wouldn't be the fastest and couldn't chase anything, but um, I'm an, I'm I'm still and I've mentioned this many times on this show. I think my big project for this year is going to be that trying to figure out if there's an in infinity loop option on Mount Townsend on the Olympic Peninsula. I needed a little bit of route scouting, but that might be that might be possible. Sounds like an inspiring project. Yeah, it sounds really cool. It is. It is fun indeed. All right. Ashley, Jason, Alex, thank you so much for jumping so last minute spontaneous um, with this breaking news on the show. I um, get this online as fast as possible. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for having us on. Yeah, thanks for putting this together short yeah. notice.